Hello all. Um, I thought rather than just setting you written tasks this half term, I am going to do some video lessons for you. So this is the first one of this project we're going to be looking at. Um, so I thought I'd challenge myself to try and keep drama practical for you because at the end of the day, that's half the reason you take the course, those of you taking it in year nine, uh, year sevens and eights, it, it's what's fun about the subject, that you do enjoy the practical side, the performing elements of it, and not just all the written work that comes with it. So in light of that, I had to kind of rack my brain brains or what's left of them after the Easter holidays and think of what would really work from the point of view of performance while we're all in this lockdown situation. So what better than monologues? <laughs> so I'm going to take you through now a bit more information about monologues and the idea of this project is over the next few weeks you're going to have a go at writing your own monologue about your experience in lockdown. Um, now these can be fun anecdotes that you want to tell, you might want to talk about your feelings, something more serious, it's completely up to you. I'm not going to limit you in regards to what you actually want to write about. Um, what I will do is each week I'll upload another video like this with a masterclass from me on different elements that you'd want to add to the performance. OK, now this first lesson, we're going to be looking all about how do you write a good monologue and giving you a bit of background with that. So I'm going to take you through now this PowerPoint that I've put together for you just to run through this first kind of couple of lessons about writing a monologue. So monologues, how to write a good monologue. So your learning objectives for these lessons are we're going to be looking at what is a monologue, the different types of monologues there are and why this is important in performance, why they're included in plays and so on. Um, then we're going to look at how to actually write a monologue, how to ap approach that and explore looking at different examples of different types of writing. So you've got three different options you can choose from. Uh, next, we're going to look at how you can actually create a five point plan to write your monologue and that's what we're going to give you time to do at the end of this lesson is that shouldn't take more than five ten minutes of your time um, and finally how to create a monologue based on your own lockdown experience so what is a monologue well basically it's a speech for one <laughs> which is perfect for these lockdown times um, the clue is there in the title obviously it comes from the latin mono which just means one um, and then logos means speech so you can impress mrs wadsworth miss grindley uh, miss johnson there with a bit of latin being thrown in cross curricula for you and um, you may have heard in your english lessons of the term soliloquy now this is a shakespearean style of monologue um, Again, it's a speech for one person and one character. However, the difference of a soliloquy from what the term monologue means in general about one person acting and speaking is that soliloquy is very much about a character revealing their innermost feelings, their motives to what they're about to do. In other words, letting the audience in on what's going to happen next. That would be the difference of a soliloquy. And you might decide you're going to take that style for your own bit of writing. Um, but monologues don't always have to take that format. They can be written as a character talking directly to an audience, like I am to you at the moment. Um, it might be the actual person acting out the scenario that they're talking about uh, without talking to the audience. That is absolutely fine. Or you might decide to do a combination of the two. So what I've done now is I've selected three different short extracts of monologues. Um, which I will, I will perform for you from my sofa, so don't expect anything too marvellous, um, but to give you an idea of the delivery. So the first one we're going to look at is from a play called Shakers Restirred by John Godber. Um, this is about a group of cocktail wa waitresses um, that work in a restaurant, and it's it, throughout the play, each one of them has their own monologue to talk about how they got to where they did and their experiences. Um, so the one I've chosen is Carol's monologue for you. OK, um, so I will read it for you. But this is an example of someone who's written a monologue, delivering a monologue just directly to the audience, just telling them what she's going through. OK, I can't help it. I hate it when people presume that because you do a job like this, you're thick, you know, some nights I just can't stand it I can't I want to stand up on top of the bar and shout I've got O levels I've got A levels and a Bachelor of Arts degree so don't condescend to me and don't pretend you feel sorry for me and don't treat me like I can't read or talk or join in any of your conversations because I can I see these teenage like men and women 
with the well-cut suits and metal briefcases, discussing the city, the arts and timeshares in Tuscany. <laughs> and I'm jealous. So I can't understand how they've achieved that success. It's so difficult. So that's an example of someone just delivering something complete to the audience. And as these lessons go on, I'll talk more about different use of accent, voice, emphasis in those speeches. OK, I might refer back to this at some point. Um, the next example, um, any of you that do Lambda may be familiar with this because this is actually um, a Lambda set piece from from years ago. And this is an example of someone just completely acting out a scene, acting out the moment. Um, now, obviously, that is going to be tricky for me to do from sofa position for now. So I'm not going to put any physicality in it. Um, but I will just read it out for you. I'm not going to read the stage directions, which you'll notice if you look at the screen. There's lots of bits in brackets and italics. You should already know from your work with script. They are stage directions and not to be read aloud. Um, but obviously, if I was up on my feet acting this out, this is what yeah, you know, they are what I'd be doing, those directions. Um, but I'm not going to do that on this occasion. We do have a lesson on physicality coming up where I will be moving a bit more um, and giving you some examples of how you can use your body, gestures, mannerisms and so on. Um, but for this, I will just read it for now so you can familiarise yourself with the t this type of monologue, which is an example of someone being actually in a scene playing a part so for your example if you were going to write something about your lockdown and give an example of something you did maybe with a family member or something they did and you're acting out them um this would be a good way to do it okay reserved madame that table is reserved i said this table is reserved look the notice it says reserved you did hear me there's no service at this table, so there's no point sitting at it. If you don't mind, you'll find a place over there. Really, some people. There. I said there. You do understand there, don't you? <sighs> We're not going to be difficult, are we? Difficulties at this time of day is something we could well do without. Let's not have difficulties on top of everything else. So if you don't mind, madam, over there. So you get the idea. You're not speaking to the audience. You're speaking to an imaginary character on stage. And that might be how you decide you want to do your own speech so that you're more pretending to be someone else. Um, for example, um, if I was going to tell an anecdote of my lockdown experience, I might tell the story of when my kids came to find me to tell me that the hamster had escaped from the cage and was eating an Easter egg. I would probably act that story out rather than deliver it all to the audience. Um, however, another example of what you could do if you wanted to combine the two approaches um, is in this play, Laughing Wild by Christopher Durang. Um, this is um, just a three-act play with only one man and one woman in it. Um, the first act is just a woman telling this full story um, about being in a supermarket. This is a very, very, this is a shorter extract. The actual monologue itself is a whole act. And then the man is the man in the scene. He tells his version of events. And then the third act, they're kind of acting out the different versions. It's a very funny play. Um, but I included this one because it it has that combination of someone speaking directly to the audience, but also having moments where she's becoming the characters in the scene. And this, from a performance point of view, for those who want to challenge yourself as a performer, this is actually um, the challenging one because you're having to kind of talk quite naturally, but then suddenly become different people in the scene. So again, if I was telling my kid's hamster story, I might want to start telling the story from my perspective as a mum, but then act out the kids and maybe even the hamster um, eating the chocolate and just getting through it that way, okay? To make a nice funny performance with one person for you. So again, um, I will deliver this just directly to you in character for now, but in future lessons, we'll talk more about voice and accent and so on, because this play is set in America, in New York, hence the dodgy accent I'm about to adopt just for you, okay? I want to talk to you about life. It's just too difficult to be alive, isn't it? And try to function. There are all these people to deal with. I tried to buy a can of tuna fish in the supermarket and there was this person standing right in front of where I wanted to reach out to grab the tuna fish. And I waited a while to see if they'd move and they didn't. 
They were looking at the tuna fish too, but they were taking a real long time over it, reading the ingredients on each can like they were a book. Pretty boring book if you ask me, but nobody has. So I waited a long while and they didn't move, and I couldn't get to the tuna fish cans. And I thought about asking them to move, but then that seemed so stupid not to have sensed that I needed to get by them. That I had this awful fear that it would do no good. No good at all to ask them. They'd probably say something like, We'll move when we're ready, you nagging cow. And then where would I be? And so I started to cry out of frustration. Quietly so not to disturb anyone. And still, even though I was softly sobbing, this stupid person didn't grasp that I needed to get by them. And so I reached out with my fist and I brought it down real hard on their head and said, Would you kindly move, idiot? So you get the idea there of where it kind of moves between her being within the scene with the people to just telling the audience. So they are the three options I would say to you to consider when thinking about your own a- anecdotes. So now let's look at how to actually write a monologue. So before you start making a plan, the things you need to think about the following, you know, what is your monologue actually going to be about? What has your experience of lockdown been like so far? Or is there a particular tale or story that you want to share with us, you know, that you want to share with me that you want to, you want to record? Um, So what we talk about in English terms is think about the theme or in drama, think about the mood that the scene's going to take. Um, How do you want to deliver it? Those three examples we just had, are you retelling an anecdote, a story that's already happened, something quite comic? So are you going to act out elements of it and talk to the audience? Are you going to just talk to the audience directly about how you feel about this coronavirus issue or any of the lockdown experiences you've had? Um, The combination of the two might come into play or you might just decide to act out a whole scene that had happened to you, okay? You need to decide which approach you're most comfortable taking. Uh, fan- next, what's your objective in the speech? We, we've talked a lot about objective in drama and what your character's aim is. So what is the main point you want to get across to the audience? It could be simple as you just wanting to write something to give your audience a laugh. You want them to find this funny. Um, there might be a moral element to your tale. You know, maybe you've burnt something trying to cook something off this and you actually want to educate people on, yeah, maybe don't put something in the microwave for longer than you should or, you know, think about your tale so far. Um, perhaps you just want to use this as an opportunity to express your feelings. Sometimes approaching to write writing a monologue is as easy as just having a diary entry for that day and just reading your diary entry aloud. You know, if you're not a keen performer, if that's not what you enjoy to do, that might be a nice approach for for you that that feels a bit more comfortable for you um but bear in mind that whatever you write this is a part of history now this kind of lockdown experience we're having is something that hasn't been experienced by any of us in our lifetime so in 20 30 years time when or oh, when you're as ancient as i am you might want to look back at this actually and go oh wow i remember writing this piece and performing this piece about this experience so you know think carefully about what you actually want to want to say because this is a part of history you are writing exciting hey um finally is there going to be a key audience for your speech is this something that actually you'd like to deliver to maybe one of your parents at home, maybe record and send to a grandparent or just some of your mates that you're missing. You know, ideally, you don't have to show anyone this performance or this piece apart from send it to me and it's safe with me, don't worry. Um, But there might be someone you actually want to deliver this to or a particular friend that you feel that this speech might be for or help them. Um, Equally, you might decide you want to do this for primary children that they can learn something from your experience or get something from it. So think about your key audience, okay? Now to get on to the actual writing. Now, in English lessons, you've no doubt done a story mountain or a five-point plan or something similar like this. So I'm just going to recap it for you. Um, in a, in your monologue, you need to make sure you have these five elements. So your, your opening, we need to know where the story starts, where it begins, where your tale. And that might be as simple as you saying to your audience, I'm going to tell you about this this anecdote that happened in my house during this experience, okay? Then build up the action a bit. That's when you can start adding emotion, voice, tone, and the next few lessons are going to talk more about that. Um, But build the story to its climax. Um, Finally, you have your resolution. That's when things start to calm down. And the ending, you know, did it, has it ended happily ever after? So in my anecdote about the hamster, 
the opening would be the fact that I was on a Zoom call at the time with some of my old colleagues from down south when Arthur came running in um, to yell at me that the hamster had broken.